Hi students, welcome to the session on a reflection of a plane wave by a conductor at normal incidence. Right? Uh, so far we consider plane wave propagation in uh, unbounded, isotropic and uh, <coughs> homogeneous medium. Right? So uh, I have put video on those things. Right? So unbounded, the medium was unbounded, earlier we considered isotropic medium and that was uh, homogeneous. Right now, what you are going to say is we when uh, we consider a, a scenario where a plane wave from one medium meets a different medium, right? So that is the scenario we are going to say, right? So when plane wave from one medium meets a different medium, what happens is uh, part of the plane wave is reflected and uh, part of the plane wave is transmitted, right? So, how much it is reflected or uh, how much it is uh, transmitted depends on constitutive parameters, right? So, the amount of uh, uh, reflection and uh, transmission depends on constitutive parameters uh, mu, epsilon and sigma, right? Because these are all the parameters which characterize the uh, behavior of the medium, fine? Okay, so here we will consider a, a ref, reflection of a plane wave by a conductor. You see the wave is coming from uh, lossless dielectric or free space, right? So this is one medium, this is medium one, this is medium two, fine. So, okay, with uh, constitutive parameters uh, mu one, epsilon one and sigma one. Similarly, this is medium two, with uh, parameters mu2, epsilon2 and sigma2, right? Since it is a lossless dielectric, it is uh, insulated, so conductivity is zero. This is perfect conductor, so conductivity tends to infinity, fine? So, let us assume that the wave, the electric field is along the x direction, fine? So, electric field is along the x direction, that's why Ea is along the x direction. And the wave propagates in y direction. A is, uh, is the direction of uh, wave propagation. So, electric field is in x direction. It is like this. And the wave is propagating in z direction. Like this means the magnetic field should be in uh, y direction. Right? So, uh, how it will be? It will be perpendicular. To, y is perpendicular to both x and x. So, I put a dot. That means the y axis is coming out of the screen. Please remember it. Right? So this dot, so y axis is coming out of the screen, which is perpendicular to both x and z. This is the direction of magnetic field. Fine. Okay. So you see, partly reflected, partly uh, transmitted. But uh, in ideal conductor, what will happen is here everything will be zero. All these things will be zero. Why it is zero? Because the ideal conductor, uh, the electric field inside the conductor is zero right and magnetic field is also zero so the uh, wave cannot propagate it is fully reflected so these things is not possible right uh, just i have shown here to show you how much it is reflected how much it is transmitted for that only i have drawn but in exam you don't need to draw this right so these things you can neglect this part there is no transmitted wave in ideal conductor because it has uh, no electric field, right? So the wave cannot propagate. Okay, so it will be there. The medium will be conductor. It has a uh, mu2, epsilon2, and sigma2 will be there. But wave will not propagate. It is fully reflected at the conductor boundary, right? So it is a uh, dielectric conductor boundary. This is the boundary. Fine. Okay. Now we will see that. So uh, what I I want to um, emphasizes uh, let us derive the equation from that we will gather some important uh, information right okay let us see uh, first we bother about incident wave fine so let us assume that uh, electric field right ei and uh, magnetic field hi is traveling along uh, AZ direction. That is the wave is traveling along AZ direction, right? So, uh, 
how can i represent uh, electric field electric field is uh, in terms of z because wave is traveling along the z direction so e i s is equal to e i e power minus uh, gamma 1 z this we know already this we have derived right in for rossi dielectric from that we have to get this equation so if you have any doubt on this please refer my video on a wave propagation in lossy dielectric right similarly uh, what is hi is hiz so hiz is given by hi e power minus gamma 1 z that is equal to hi is equal to ea by eta eta is it is a medium one the wave is propagating from medium one so ea by n1 e power minus gamma 1 z it is in a y direction it is in a x direction yes or no so you see why i put a e power minus i have taken because the wave is propagating in the forward direction so it should be e power minus if it is reflected it will be e power plus okay so those things i have explained in that video so similarly you see what is a reflected wave right so reflected wave we assume that uh, e r and h r are traveling along which direction if it is a forward wave is travel propagating wave is in a z means the reflected wave will be in minus a z direction so it is minus a z direction right so what about e r z e r z is given by so it is e r e power plus gamma 1 because the wave is reflected so it will become plus gamma 1 so electric field is always along the x direction we assume that fine so what about magnetic field h r z reflected magnetic waves magnetic field is h r e power gamma 1 z right so in which direction the magnetic field will be there you see electric field is along x direction magnetic field is along uh, which direction i don't know so electric field is along x direction magnetic field direction i don't know the wave is reflected back and it is in z direction so what will be the magnetic field direction so electric field is perpendicular to magnetic field which is perpendicular to both so if you take a cross product uh, which one will give minus z if you have a minus y vector then only the answer will be minus z so if electric field is in x direction and a reflected wave is in minus z direction, in which direction the magnetic field should be? It should be minus y direction. So it is minus a y. Minus a y I have written like this. So this is the magnetic field direction. Okay. So those equations are very very important. So this is one. Next we talk about a transmitter wave. Suppose, see here we don't have a transmitted wave, right? But uh, if you want to find everything, let us go for, uh, let us take general case, then we come to the conductor, right? So, in transmitted wave, what will happen? So, ET, let us assume ET, HT is a transmitted wave, right? In which direction it will go? It will go in the Z direction only, right? So, reflection will be in minus A Z direction. It's an incoming wave, it is reflected. The transmitted wave will go the same direction. So it is going in the plus A Z direction only. Fine. So similarly for this, uh, what is ET? ET must be uh, ET, magnitude is ET, E power minus gamma 2 Z. Why I put gamma 2? Because transmission occurs in the medium 2. So it is gamma 2 and uh, it's minus because it is in forward direction ht is given by ht e power minus gamma 2 z again it is in ax uh, direction this is electric field in ax direction magnetic field will be in ay direction so ht i can write as uh, what do you call et by eta 2 yes or no ht e by h is equal to eta so h is equal to e by eta so it's a medium to i have put uh, et by eta to e power minus gamma to z uh, a y fine so here you see i can write uh, 
E i so h h is equal to E i by eta one year I have written. Similarly, what is h year? H is e h r is e h r is equal to it will be minus uh, E r by eta one because reflection in the medium one only. E r by eta one e power gamma one z. Okay, so we write this because it is very important. So e power gamma one z a y. Right, this is by HR. Fine, so better we write this. We like like this HR minus AY. Right, so that will be easy to understand for you people. Okay, so ultimately, anyway, it will become minus ER by H1. So we can compare HR is equal to minus ER by H1. So that's what I have written that. So this implies HR is equal to minus ER by eta 1 right similarly what is my hi hi is equal to ei by eta 1 hi is equal to ei by eta 1 fine so hi please remember this we have to use later hi is equal to ei by eta 1 hr is equal to minus er by eta 1 so this is my ht so ht is given like this Right. These are the things we must know. Fine. So, what is this? So, this uh, ER, EI, HI, those things are magnitude of the incident. Uh, so, what are the things I have got? EI, uh, ER, HI. These are all HI, HR. Right. These are all magnitude of uh, incident. I is for incident, R is for reflector. Right, so magnitude is of incident reflected and I H T E T H T and transmitter right electric and magnetic field. Okay, so those things we must remember. Okay, now we come to the uh, our uh, equation. So at the boundary, what is happening? You see the boundary. See now, now we so it's a general equation. So I included both the incident wave, reflected wave, transmitter wave. But for conductor, there is no transmission. Everything is reflected. So this part will not play. We are going to find uh, what is the wave incidence at the conductor only. So what is the thing happening here is uh, so you see for conductor we know the conditions. What is the medium one condition? V one epsilon one sigma one is equal to zero. These are all the medium one parameters okay so now you see let us assume e1 e1 is the total electric field of the incident uh, wave so total electric field in the left hand side or medium one right so what is a uh, e1 e1 will be equal to it is incident plus reflected yes or no e1 or e total you can call e total so the uh, in medium one what is total electric field? Let us assume E1, total electric field. Total E is given by E1. E1 is a sum of incident electric field plus a reflected electric field. Yes or no? So, what is my incident electric field? I have found it is Ei e power minus gamma z. Reflected electric field is E R E power minus gamma z. Both are having a direction of uh, A x. That's what I have already done. Right. So what will happen? So it will indicate E 1 total electric field. Right. So total electric field in medium 1 is E 1. Right. So E 1 is equal to right E i E power minus gamma z. ER is uh, opposite to EI minus EI e power minus gamma z AX vector. Fine. So, why did I write uh, ER is opposite to EI? You see at the boundary, this is the boundary, here the wave is coming, right? So, what happens? Uh, the wave electric field is along x direction. This is what x direction we know. This y direction so the electric field is coming like this this is e electric field is tangential to the conductor boundary because this is the 
conductor boundary as per our diagram so it is a conductor boundary electric field is tangential we know tangential component of electric field is zero yes or no so the wave is coming like this and reflected and it is also going in the x direction we told so what is the total electric field total electric field is uh, ei plus er tangential component of electric field that's what your electric field is purely tangential because it is parallel to that so tangential so ei by ei plus er that is total electric field that's what your total electric field which is ei plus er total electric field tangential component of electric field is zero means total electric field is zero this indicates ei is equal to minus er right that's why i have put uh, er is equal to minus ei so again i uh, explain the total electric wave e field is along the x direction and a reflected wave is also in electric field is along the x direction so it is tangential to the boundary tangential total so total electric field is tangential to the boundary total electric field is ea plus er tangential component of electric field is zero so ea plus er zero this indicates ea is equal to minus er that's what i substituted here right so ea is equal to minus er right now what are the things we know the medium one is a dielectric right uh, pure dielectric in pure dielectric medium one it's a dielectric this indicates what is the thing happening in dielectric alpha is equal to zero attenuation is zero if you have any doubt please refer my video on wave propagation in pure dielectric this indicates gamma is equal to alpha plus j b j beta alpha zero means gamma is equal to j beta one it's medium one so substitute that so e one vector is equal to e i e power minus j beta one z minus e i uh, sorry it is plus right so e power its reflection will be plus so it is plus so e power plus j beta z into uh, a x direction fine so if you simplify this it is e power j theta e power minus j theta formula so what you get is minus 2j e i uh, sine beta 1z a x that is what my total electric field in the medium one right so if i want to convert into phasor form include a time parameter so what i do e1 is equal to whenever i want to make it a time parameter what we will do real part of e1 e power j omega t fine this we will do if you have to multiply with e power j omega t and take real part if you have any doubt time varying function if you have any doubt please may I refer my video on time varying field so it will indicate it's a two real part of e j e1 j omega t what is e1 real part of e1 is minus 2 j e i sin beta 1 z into e power j omega t cos omega t plus j sin omega t so you can take a real part already 2 is real e i sin beta 1 z everything is real real so minus uh, 2 uh, sin beta uh, sorry 2 e i these are all real values so i take that 2 e i sin beta 1 z is the real what is the remaining thing is j so j cos omega t if you multiply this with j cos omega t imaginary j into j minus uh, j square minus 1 so minus 1 sin omega t that is a real number that is minus sin omega t so it will become plus sin omega t i take only real part so what is the total electric field in medium 1 in the perfect conductor boundary electric field is given by 2 e 1 sin beta 1 z sin omega t right so this is very 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 important derivation so it is what a electric field of the wave when it is incident on a when it is normal incident at a conductor boundary fine so here you see this is so when wave is incident normally what is the nature of the wave it is a standing wave
right so it is not a propagating wave right or tra uh, traveling wave it is not a traveling wave it is a standing wave so this implies e i that is total electric field is a standing wave not traveling wave why it is standing wave not traveling wave because you see any traveling wave we will represent as uh, some parameter uh, vector a sin omega t minus beta z then it indicates traveling in uh, positive direct positive z direction if you put plus it is traveling in negative z direction so we need omega t plus beta z that is the general form of a traveling wave but here we don't have a beta z so that means it is standing wave so electric field is a standing wave that is very 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 important conclusion we are making from this equation fine so and you see this electric field magnitude if you take a magnitude of this electric field what will happen mod e mod e e vector i i take so it will become e it will be 2 e i sin beta 1 z into sin omega t that's what your magnitude see the magnitude is sinusoidally varying so the magnitude of uh, electric field is sinusoidally varying one okay so you see it's a trigonometrical function so it is sinusoidally varying with the distance from z axis reflecting plane or with the distance from reflecting plane you see z okay so how can we represent it's a standing wave it's not a traveling wave so let us see if it is um, a conductor boundary right here only it is reflected so how the electric field will be the pictorial representation is pictorial representation is given by uh let's we'll see i'll draw okay so it is a sinusoidally varying function it is a sign so i see it's reflected it is like this fine so let me draw clearly mm. so it is going like this similarly what will happen here it's a pure sine wave right so another one wave will be like this mm. sinusoidally varying function if you draw it will be like this this is what uh, total e1 right so this is e1 total electric field in the medium this is medium one this is medium two fine so this is our z axis here z is equal to zero clear or not so this i have drawn from this so this is a standing wave it is not a traveling wave right what is the maximum value of uh, okay what is the maximum value of e1 e1 maximum is given by you see what is the maximum sign will be maximum what is the maximum value of sign one this is also sign one so what is the maximum value e1 is equal to 2 ei so e1 maximum is 2 ei this is the third point to be noted so first thing is the wave is traveling it's a uh, what do you call it's a standing wave so electric field is standing wave and e1 the magnitude varies sinusoidally and the third one is the magnitude of electric field maximum value of my electric field is 2 ei right so at z is equal to 0 what will happen ei e1 is 0 at z is equal to 0 at the boundary electric field is 0 you see why because when you substitute z to 0 e1 will become 0 so at the conductor boundary electric field is zero that's what tangential component of electric field we have studied it is zero only in the boundary condition here also it is proved that is very very important so not only z is equal to zero when you substitute z is equal to n lambda by two where n varies from one to three up to infinity 
what will happen it will be zero yeah, because when you substitute uh, lambda by 2 z uh, n is equal to z is equal to n lambda by 2 beta 1 what is beta beta is 2 pi by lambda right z is n lambda by 2 i told suppose if you substitute uh, n is equal to 1 lambda by 2 it is sine pi 0 even if you substitute sin 2 pi it will be 0 sin 3 pi 0 sin 4 pi 0 so 1 lambda by 2 2 lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 always it is 0 so the electric field component uh, electric field has a no electric field when at z is equal to 0 not only z is equal to 0 at z is equal to n lambda by 2 also the electric field is 0 similarly e1 is maximum not only at uh, uh here where, what is the where it will be maximum when z is equal to uh, m lambda by 4 you apply sine beta z beta is 2 pi by lambda z for example m is equal to 1 m lambda by 4 sine pi by 2 so similarly if you put 2 3 4 always it is pi, pi by 2 3 pi by 2 4 5 pi by 2 it is maximum so that is the thing we have to Remember about uh, electric field, the uh, nature of electric field when a wave is incident on a normally incident on a conductor. So, these five points one is it is a standing wave, electric field is sinusoidally varying, at the boundary, electric field is zero, the maximum occurs at z is equal to m lambda by 4, minimum occurs at z is zero. Right? So, okay. Now we derive the equation for magnetic field, right? So, similarly, we use the same concept. Uh, what is magnetic field? I can write uh, H. So, derivation. So, H is equal H1, total magnetic field in the medium 1. So, total H in medium 1, I write as H1. H1 is given by, as usual, incident wave HI e power minus. So everything I put directly I write e power minus j beta 1 z. Why I write j beta 1? You know. Because alpha 0. So gamma is equal to minus j beta 1 z. It is for forward wave. And uh, this is in traveling in a y direction. Similarly what is reflected wave? HR uh, e power plus j. You remember right? Same thing. So I am reducing the steps. So it is reflected wave will be in minus a y direction that we have seen already. Okay. So, what is my HI? HI I write as EI by eta 1 e power minus j beta 1 z AY. What is HR? HR I told it is minus uh, ER by eta 1. Hope you remember I have told, right? ER by eta 1. If you have any doubt, please refer the top top side right so e power j beta z minus a y so it is plus it is plus a y right so hr is equal to minus er by eta 1 right so if you simplify what will happen so it is 2 uh, sorry uh, 2 okay so it will be sorry e i it is e i so 2 ei by eta 1 right uh, cos uh, beta z beta 1 z right into ay right this is what my total electric field fine so uh, if i want it uh, in the time varying format what i have to do i find time varying so h1 is equal to real part of uh, h1 vector into e power j omega t follow the same procedure that we did for uh, what you call electric field it will give h1 is equal to 2 eta i by eta 1 here cos beta 1 z into cos omega t we will get okay so that's what you are into a y vector fine okay this is magnetic field right so that we have to know say what is the thing h1 i found so again you do all the manipulation take real part as i did for electric field you will get the same equation right in exam you don't need to write but uh, you have to understand how it has come 
so i got h1 so how can we find uh, from this what we are understanding we see that again this is also a standing wave the magnetic field is also a standing wave because there is no minus beta z so this implies h1 is a standing wave not traveling wave right not traveling wave the reason is same as i have given for uh, what you call electric field second it is indicating this is also uh, sinusoidally varying or cosinusoidally varying sinusoidally varying with the distance h is sinusoidally varying with the distance yes when z varies the value will vary with respect to distance z right z axis third one what is the thing what is the maximum value of h1 h1 maximum is given by e y e i by eta 1 is equal to nothing but h1 so e i by eta is equal to h i so that is equal to h i because h is equal to e by eta so h i max equal to 2 h i right so that is very important difference then what is the next thing we have to know uh, minimum value what is the minimum value of uh, h1 h1 minimum is given by uh, it is zero at z is equal to is it zero at z is equal to zero no when we substitute z is zero it will not become zero when it will become zero it is zero when z is equal to m lambda by 4 why you see cos beta 1 z so cos beta 1 2 pi by lambda z is equal to m lambda by 4 let us assume m is equal to 1 so m lambda by 4 lambda lambda so cos pi by 2 likewise 2 lambda 3 lambda everything it will become uh, z cos pi by 2 3 pi by 2 so it will be 0 so h1 minimum is 0 at z is equal to m lambda by 4 Similarly, H1 is maximum at uh, wherever you can find maximum is equal to H1 maximum at Z is equal to M N lambda by 2. Right? So, same thing we did it for uh, electric field, but it's in opposite. There at M lambda by 4, it is maximum, and at N lambda by 2, it is minimum. Right? So, that's what happening in the electric field. In magnetic field, it is opposite. That's true only because electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other so again you see the waveform it is a cos sinusoidal varying but cosine function how can i draw you see it is a wave fine so it will be like this it is cosinusoidally varying so how it will be it will be like this fine so the wave the wave it's a standing wave it's not a traveling wave it is like this fine okay so how it will go it will go like this fine okay similarly it will go right so it is the direction it's for magnetic field and uh, it is a boundary right so it's medium one it is medium two right it is h total right so it is a it is this is what a magnetic field is varying right you see both are extreme opposite to each other right 90 degree phase shift it is cos that is sine so electric field and magnetic field are 90 degree apart this is sine wave so it is perpendicular to each other right so this is very very important next we have to derive the equation for transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient right we know that uh, at the boundary we remember e i plus e r is equal to e transmission why you see uh, electric field is coming here right so what is a total electric field in medium one incident electric field and reflection electric field right so and also we know that uh, uh, what do you call mm, so ei plus er 
is equal to e transmission fine then we know uh, and why it is e transmission because this is what here e transmission the electric tangential component of electric field is continuous so whatever be the electric field here this will be here also that we know at the boundary condition so at uh, boundary et1 is equal to et2 that we derived so whatever the component of electric field here that is equal to this component in the medium one total electric field is ei plus er that is equal to this component et so that is what ei plus er is equal to et similarly we know hi plus hr is equal to ht fine so what will happen so we know that uh, hi is given by ei by eta eta it's a medium one this is hi hr in medium one right only transmission in medium two so h is equal to e by eta so i substitute h is equal to e by eta one fine hr is equal to minus er by eta one so that is equal to ht yes or no so ht by uh, sorry ht i can write as uh, et by eta two why i put eta two because transmission in medium two so this is what uh, hr so let us consider this is equation number one this is equation number two fine so you see that uh, right one divided by eta one eta two you divide equation one by eta two so that will become 1 by eta 2 ei plus er is equal to et by eta 2 right now subtract uh, this 3 subtract uh, 3 from 2 2 minus 3 gives 1 divided by eta 1 into ei minus er is equal to 1 by eta 2 uh, ei plus er fine so if you subtract and equate uh, this then you will get this answer so ei see if you subtract it will be minus eta 1 by eta 2 ei minus er that i brought right hand side so ei into 1 by eta 1 minus 1 by eta 2 that is equal to er i bring ei one side er another side 1 by eta 2 plus 1 by eta 1 right so if you simplify this what you get is uh, er by ei will be equal to eta 2 minus eta 1 divided by eta 2 plus eta 1 right this is what the ratio of a reflected electric field to the transmitted electric field so this is called the reflection coefficient gamma Right, what is ER by EI? So, out of uh, total incident, how much is reflected? That is what your reflection coefficient. Fine, so that is uh, how much of incident, how much of a wave is reflected compared to the incident. This incident, this reflector, that ratio is known as reflection coefficient for electric field. This is everything we have done it for electric field. Similarly, uh, if you want to uh, for a uh, transmission coefficient what you have to do you do that uh, 1 divided by eta 1 so divide uh, equation 1 by eta 1 it will give ei by eta 1 plus er by eta 1 is equal to total et by eta 1 right so from 2 we can get uh, ei by eta 1 minus er by eta 1 is equal to et by eta 2 2 indicates because 2 is 1 by eta 1 ea minus er is equal to et by eta 2 so you see this is equation number 5 this is equation number 6 this is 4 let us see fine so this is equation number 5 and 6 what will happen so add 5 plus 6 if you add 5 plus 6 2 eta i divided by eta 1 is equal to eta t into 1 by eta 1 plus 1 by eta 2 
right so if you simplify what you get is 2 ei divided by eta 1 et uh, eta 2 plus eta 1 divided by eta 1 eta 2 so this is cancelled so what you are getting transmission coefficient i want the transmission coefficient et by ei out of incident how much is transmitted so that is given by 2 eta 2 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2 this is what known as transmission coefficient uh, tau tau e fine so you see this is transmission coefficient the reflection coefficient is given by e r by e i that is given by eta 2 minus eta 1 divided by eta 2 plus uh, eta 1 that is what t you see the medium 2 is a conductor i told yes or no so in medium 1 is dielectric medium 2 is conductor the boundary is conductor boundary so for conductor what is the impedance eta 2 0 so if you substitute eta 0 you see what is the transmission transmission will be 0 that's what we have told already in a conductor uh, in conductor uh, there is no transmission in this case because medium 2 is a conductor for conductor the impedance is 0 intrinsic impedance so this implies tau e is equal to 0 transmission coefficient the wave will not transmit eta 2 0 means why eta 2 0 for conductor please refer my video on a uh, uh, plane wave propagation in conductor similarly you see when eta 2 0 what will happen to transmit uh, reflection coefficient so sorry this is gamma right so uh, gamma e this is gamma e gamma e reflection coefficient zero why when uh, what is uh, what is happening to reflection coefficient gamma e when eta 2 zero it is minus one reflection is minus one means everything is reflected negative direction opposite direction that's what minus one indicates right so whatever wave propagates that is reflected at the boundary that's what this minus one reflection coefficient of minus one that is E R is equal to minus E I. Gamma is equal to E R by E I. That is equal to minus 1 means E R is equal to minus E. All the waves are reflected back. That is proved. So, this is correct answer. Fine. So, this we must remember. Okay. So, similarly, we can derive it for uh, magnetic field also. What is the transmission coefficient and reflection coefficient? How can we derive? So, HR by HI, this is a transmission coefficient for, sorry, reflection coefficient for H that is given by HR is equal to minus ER by eta I, eta 1, HI is equal to uh, EI by eta 1. So, I write as ER by EI because HR is equal to minus ER by eta 1. HI is equal to minus EI by eta 1. So cancel, you get this. So what is my gamma H? ER by EI already I found. What is ER by EI? ER by EI is minus ER by EI is uh, eta 2 minus eta 1 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2. That is given by eta 1 minus eta 2 divided by eta 1 plus eta 2. This is gamma H. That is trans reflection coefficient for magnetic field. Similarly, what is gamma E? We know Hi plus Hr is equal to H total. Right? So divide all the sides by Hi. So H total by Hi is equal to 1 plus Hr by Hi. Fine. So what is that? I want Hr by Hi. Sorry, H T by H I. So one plus H R by H I. What is H R by H I? Just now only we found it is eta one minus eta two divided by eta one plus eta two. That is equal to H T by H I. If you simplify, what you get is this implies H T by H I. That is equal to transmission coefficient tau. Right? Tau H is given by 2 eta 1 you see if you simplify this one this left hand side what you get is eta 1 
plus eta 2. This is transmission coefficient. Right? I hope you understand this derivation, the big derivation, but uh, concepts are very important and very important for your uh, board ex uh, university exams and the gate exam. I hope you understand everything. If you have any doubt, please ask me in comment section. Thank you.